Hello, my name's Tony Mount. Because today is the anniversary of the Battle of Bosworth, I thought I'd talk to you about Richard III's family tree. Richard III reigned for just two years, but when he was born, he was the fourth son of the king's second cousin, so there seemed no possibility he would ever be king, but he was born in very troubled times. So what was the cause of all the trouble? Way back in 1415, Henry V had won the Battle of Agincourt, but he was soon succeeded by his son, Henry VI, and Henry was no warrior prince. He came to the throne aged just nine months, but in 1453 he lost his reason and matters went from bad to worse. The Yorkists seized their chance. So what gave the Yorkists the idea that he had any right to the throne? Our story goes back to the reign of Edward III in the middle of the 14th century. Every king must have a male heir to succeed him. The trouble was Edward III had rather too many. His eldest son, Edward the Black Prince, died before Edward III, so never actually became king. It was his son, Richard II, who succeeded Edward III. Edward III's second son was Lionel, Duke of Clarence, and he too died before his father, having sired a daughter, Philippa. The third son was John of Gaunt, Duke of Lancaster, and he was the one who took on himself the assistance of young Richard II. Then there were two younger sons still, Edmund of Langley, Duke of York, and the last son, Thomas of Woodstock, who became Duke of Norfolk. Now, our story concentrates on the three middle sons, Lionel, Duke of Clarence, John of Gaunt, Duke of Lancaster, and Edmund of Langley, Duke of York. Lionel's daughter, Philippa, over on the left-hand side of your screen, married Edmund Mortimer, Earl of March. They had a son, Roger Mortimer, also Earl of March. And because King Richard II, with the heavy border showing that he was king, never had any children, so it was the Earls of March who were his closest male heirs. Roger Mortimer had a daughter, Anne. Meanwhile, Edmund of Langley, Duke of York, had a younger son, Richard, Earl of Cambridge. As you'll see from the chart, Richard married Anne Mortimer, and the couple appear twice in the family tree. Over on the right-hand side, if we follow Edmund of Langley's descendants, his eldest son was Edward Duke of York, who died at the Battle of Agincourt without having had any children. Richard, Earl of Cambridge, died the same year. So it was Richard of Cambridge and Anne Mortimer's son, Richard, who became Duke of York, back on the left-hand side of the family tree. Now, it was this Richard, Duke of York, who was around 
during the reign of King Henry VI, right in the middle of the chart. Henry VI had married Margaret Fonjou, a French princess, and they had had a son, Edward of Lancaster, Prince of Wales. Henry was mad at the time his son was born, and the story goes that when he was told Margaret had had a child, the king said, he knew nothing about it, and that Edward must be the son of the Holy Ghost. You can imagine what the House of York made of that. Meanwhile, Richard, Duke of York, had had four sons of his own. The eldest, Edward, the second son, Edmund, the third son, George and the fourth son, Richard, our Richard. As you will see, Henry VI was descended in a straight line from John of Gaunt, Duke of Lancaster, through Henry the Fourth, Henry the Fifth. However, Richard, Duke of York, was descended from Edward III in two lines. In the male line from Edmund of Langley, Duke of York, but more importantly, in the female line, he was descended directly from Edward III's second son, Lionel. And this so Richard, Duke of York, claimed, gave him not just a double descent from Edward III, but a superior one to the House of Lancaster. After Richard, Duke of York, was killed at the Battle of Wakefield in 1460, his eldest son Edward claimed the throne of England and after three more fierce battles was accepted as king by his weary subjects. For the next ten years, Edward's throne was still in, in dispute. After the Battle of Tewkesbury, Edward awarded his youngest brother, Richard, all Warwick's northern estates. Richard also got the widowed Anne Neville as his bride. But on the 9th of April 1483, everything changed. King Edward died unexpectedly, leaving his 12-year-old son, also Edward, that's King, the boy's maternal relatives, the Woodvilles, saw their chance to grab power. Then, on the 9th of June, while Richard was busy organising the coronation for the new young king, Edward V, Bishop Stillington revealed that the boy's parents had been married bigamously. Edward IV's children were all declared illegitimate and Richard was the next adult male heir, so he was offered the crown. After just two years as king, Richard faced Henry Tudor's army at the Battle of Bosworth on the 22nd of August, 1485, Richard was slain and the Tudor dynasty was born. You can discover much more in my online courses, Richard III and the Wars of the Roses and the Warrior Kings of England which is all about the Plantagenet dynasty. To join these online courses, they are available from www 
medievalcorsets.com.